Hi and welcome to Hippo Brain. Here is where we have hippo-sized conversations with people with hippo-sized brains. Today is very interesting because it comes to my favorite sport and like all of you and all of us Indians, our religion is cricket. To hai hi hai. We are all cricket lovers and all cricket fans. There is one guy who I grew up watching because he was actually my senior in school and he lifted I think the Harris uh, shield uh, after Ravi Shastri for the second time for our school and ever since we've been looking at it and looking like this guy is like the greatest thing and we all grew up looking at him bat uh, in the grounds and uh, without further ado I wanted to introduce our guest for today, our hippo brain for today, Jatin Paranjpe. Jatin Paranjpe is an ex-India cricketer. He's been a national selector and he's a sports marketing entrepreneur. So it's going to be a very interesting mix of cricket, mindset, sports, money, commerce, everything, entrepreneurship, digital, put into one lovely session. Welcome, Jatin. Nice to have you. Thanks, Jamit. Uh, happy, to, happy to be here. Uh... Uh, I know we've uh, rescheduled this a couple of times, but uh, really happy with what you're doing. Uh, uh, it's it's interesting. I'm definitely going to have a look at the other interviews you've done with other people. And and great to connect with uh, Rajesh after 20 odd years. Uh, you know, I, uh, he uh, helped me early on in my days as I was figuring out what to do. Uh, that that uh, figuring out what to do took many, many years, but he was kind enough to help me uh, when I went to him at that stage. So happy to, happy to... You're, you're running version two. I had Kelo.com. You have Kelomore.com. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's 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 inspired by Kelo.com in in some ways, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so Jatin, let's let's start this off with the first question that I have for you, and I wanted to ask, and I probably asked everyone, every half a cricketer also. I mean, what is the mindset that it takes? You've been playing cricket for forty years now, almost. What is the mindset and the preparation today that it takes to be a modern-day Indian cricketer? I think, uh, Jamit, uh, things have changed uh, a lot uh, with the game. Uh, the game's got a lot bigger. It's uh, It's got bigger geographically. It's got bigger uh, from a revenue perspective. Uh, everything's grown massively in cricket. Uh, but, but the core of what it takes to be a cricketer still remains the same. Uh, I think at, at at one level, you have to have uh, your basic skill levels should be high. Uh, you know, you, you can't do anything without that basic raw material or skill. Uh, but, uh, but lately, uh, and, and the one big change which I would point out to is the physicality of the cricketer. Uh, from, from, uh, from when I played cricket to, when, uh, to, to the modern day Virat Kohli's uh, of this world, for example. Uh, it, it's become a lot, it's become a more physical, physically demanding game because your your calendars are are busier. You're playing all year round. You literally have thirty or forty days off during the entire year. Uh, so because because you're playing so much more cricket, you need to be fitter. Uh, and because you need to be fitter, you need to be stronger. And you know everything kind of stems from there. So I think the physicality of of the modern day cricketer is is uh, is is way way ahead of of what it uh, took for, uh, you know, uh, for a guy like me growing up to play cricket. Uh, I think that there's there's something in cricket to which cricketers refer to as uh, cricketing intelligence. Uh, I, I, I feel that is another quality uh, where, uh, which is extremely important for you to reach uh, the top level. And cricketing intelligence, simply put, is uh, understanding a match, understanding a situation, understanding a passage of play, understanding your opposition, uh, they, these are all, you know, uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it's 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 all very very sublime, uh, very subjective. Everybody understands the game in a different way, uh, but you need to be tuned into uh, the game as such. You know, the, they say as a captain, for example, you 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 need to know what's going to happen uh, two or three sessions down the road. And so today, Virat Kohli is 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 leading the team in in, in Chennai. He will be focused. Key today is day number two. Where is this game going to go? What's what's going to happen on day four and day five? Uh, so I think that 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 mental kind of uh, understanding of the game is is also extremely important, and that's that's remained consistent throughout these years. So if there's one change, I would say it's the physicality. And Jatin, can this cricketing intelligence uh, which you talked about, can it be learned, or is it sort of very intuitive? 
uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in people. It, it 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 is always learned as well. You you have a base level, uh, you know, which and and this intelligence is uh, uh, it 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 is it starts off with being a passion to play the game. You know, it it starts off being passion, and then because you're passionate, you start thinking about the game, and uh, you know, then then your cricketing intelligence is kind of ger that germination happens. But you learn it uh, in the dressing room. Uh, Rajesh, when you're playing with seniors and where, when I started playing a really top level of cricket, that was for Tata Sports Club and uh, Ravi Shastri was my captain there. I used to play under the Dilip Meng Sarkar and I would be like a kid in a toy shop, you know, in the dressing room. Uh, I would be just absorbing everything and, and that's when your understanding grows, when you, you, you need to be a sponge. So, to answer your question, you need to be a sponge, you need to uh, feed off others' knowledge because there is a lot of that uh, available. Uh, you know, so it's uh, uh, some people give it to you. Some people uh, like to be asked, uh, but you should never die wondering. You should always, you know, go, go and get it from wherever you can. So, uh, Jatin, so, uh, just taking this uh, forward a little bit. Yes, uh, there is the cricketing intelligence uh, that one sees, but um, cricket seems to be, at least from the outsider, a captain's game in, in the sense that he's looking at it every ball. He has a chance and a window to affect the outcome every ball. Unlike, let's say, in football where you say, captain khel raha hai, but the cameras are on the coach. What is the coach thinking? What is he screaming? What is he shouting? And the cricket thing, every time the camera is on the, on the captain and the intelligence is what we as lay bystanders think he, it is the captain controlling and the coach not really so. How does these dynamics work? How does it work at, let's say, Tata Sports level? How does it work at Ranji level? How does it work at the international level? So, at the international level, there is more uh, uh, bucketing of, of responsibilities. Uh, there's, you know, you have, a, you have a head coach, you have a batting coach, you have a bowling coach, you have a fielding coach, you have a strength and conditioning guy, you have a physio, you have an admin guy, you have a mental trainer. Uh, so, so the captain basically think of the captain as a. Uh, I think the best way for all three of us to understand it would be like uh, he's running a category. You know, the captain's running a category. You know, and and the the buck stops with him, but he's got his functional functional leadership. Uh, you know, uh, chalked out. Uh, that that's the that's the division of responsibility which happens at the very top. At lower levels, the captain does everything. You know, uh, because he's the like for a club. He might have a coach, but the captain is the batting coach. The captain is the uh, video analyst. The captain is everything, you know. So, so that that's just a factor of uh, the budgets you play with uh, for clubs and for uh, uh, you know for corporate teams. Uh, but you very rightly said uh, that the captain is the guy who can affect uh, or who can affect uh, the the game uh, a lot. But uh, but there's a lot of thinking which goes on behind the scenes. With all these gentlemen uh, we have spoken about, so so I'll I'll give you an example. The captain might have a point of view on uh, on on Jaimit, uh, the way he plays spin, uh, and he will then call the head coach and the batting coach and Jaimit and say, hey, you know what? I've been observing this. Why don't you try this? Uh, and uh, why don't you incorporate this element into your drills from tomorrow? And and let's see how it goes for a week. Uh, so so while 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 there is the game per se, uh, which has to be won. There are players who have to be improved as well, and and that's a that's a big responsibility of a captain. Your player development is also, uh, you know, high on his uh, on his uh, priority list uh, because today every format you play, there is a prize to be won, right? So there's a World Test Championship, there's a T20 World Cup, and there's a uh, 50 over World Cup as well. So uh, so there, there is a there is a huge gratification waiting for every format. And, and hence, uh, a, a lot, a lo hence, every day becomes very, very goal oriented. So, I think what has happened also now is that cricket has become a lot more competitive and commercial. So, what has, done, what has that done to the inflow of talent? I mean, you have a lot of young people now, you know, yeah. wanting to also get in because it's now a proper career. I mean, in the five, 10 years, if you get at the top, it's, it's very rewarding to be a cricketer. It's, it's opened uh, the floodgates, you know, because. Uh, earlier, you had uh, to be in the top 15 uh, of, of the country. Uh, but today, you've got an IPL which has eight 
teams each ipl has each ipl team has a local squad strength of 30 or 40 probably so there's uh, 320 players there ranji trophy players get paid a lakh of rupees a match now you know they have squads of 50 or 60 those are 30 teams so there's 2000 players there so earlier it was 16 players now you need to be in the best 2 and a half thousand players uh, you know in india and and you will be you will make 30 to 40 lakhs a year at least doing that and that's a you know that's a proper uh, uh, you know middle to senior uh, management executive salary basically you know so so it's opened the floodgates and what's happened is that parents parents have become more forthcoming because of this you know so so they feel are well, my son is good in cricket let him keep playing you know because he there, there is like you said you they, you can he can make it into a profession you know he can make it into his livelihood uh so and, and and what we'll see now happening out of this churn is that a lot more of these guys will start coming into coaching so today a big problem of of sport in india is the supply side and because of this ipl demand these guys are going to reach my age and you know they are going to start coaching and getting involved in the supply side and and guess what they will not only get involved in coaching they'll get involved in cricket operations uh, or or analysis or umpiring or you know they'll do a fitness trainer's course and become a physio uh, or a strength and conditioning course and become a snc coach uh, so so there there's a huge pipeline uh, which the ipl has has driven which will serve cr indian cricket for many many years to come so just to build on that what you are basically saying is sort of there's a flywheel effect which is taking place exactly and also it's strengthening the quality of talent and earlier a cricketer's life which would probably would have been say 15 or 20 years also yeah. now gets extended it's a proper career that absolutely. one could take up uh, uh, through a life absolutely today for the ipl you have uh, commentary in six or seven languages you know uh, so so you you have those roles on offer as well or you can become a professional match referee with the bcci that's decent uh, kind of compensation as well there's so many uh, uh, you know the like you said the flywheel has started turning now uh, there's no going back now it's it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger so that's that's uh, pretty interesting though so you're talking about a lot of people now coming into the sport as a career option as opposed to probably the passion then riding and then figuring out probably in your time ki main cricket khelta hu abhi now i'll figure out how i'll make the money is Correct. But uh, there is also another thing. I was once um, had a privilege of uh, talking to Anil Kumble, and he's saying there is one interesting angle also that we must not forget. He said, "What people play less cricket than before, also. So, the gully cricket hai, that I used to play almost every day. When you go down, it's not as much. So, <laughs> you have a whole host of fans that have come in who probably have not played the game as probably our age would have come in. So, you have two problems. One is the fans who are let's say armchair fans or commentator driven fans and then you have the professional guys who taken it on and have gone to some drastic different level do you see that as a challenge coming in uh, i i think the what anil said was uh, was true when he said it uh, and and i'm guessing this would have been a few years back uh, probably uh, but right now uh, uh, kilomore is is that business basically where we want more amateur sports sports uh, amateurs to come in and play and we cater to you know organizing their play uh, and we are seeing amateur cricket going through the roof right now because what's happening is oh. on these on these football turfs so we are indians right we have we there is a jugad solution for everything absolutely so idhar kya kar liya ki yaar i i want to play cricket i used to play cricket in school i want to play cricket चलो ये फुटबॉल टर्फ पे ना अंडर एंड टेनिस बॉल के साथ खेलेंगे दो दिन जाऊंगा कल्ट फिट को और दो दिन जाके बॉक्स क्रिकेट में आई शो यू नो हाउ आई टू हिट सिक्स इन स्कूल आई लड़ी गो एंड बॉल डज नॉट गेट लॉस्ट बॉल डज नॉट गेट लॉस्ट यू डोट हैव टू गो रनिंग If you're playing at Shivaji Park Gymkhana, if if you're yeah. playing at Shivaji Park Gymkhana, if somebody hits a six, you have to go to that barista and get the ball there. You know, us us me, yar, thoda time jata hai. You know, so. That day, wo tera six ja raha hai ka. Mera six kidar nahi jata tha. I remember that era where the yeah. in the maidans, 
the empire would think and say there is an imaginary line there and somebody yeah. invariably gets caught at the imaginary line and then yeah, there yeah. is a fight going on here what is going on exactly so amateur cricket in india is going through the roof and, nice. uh, and women are playing a lot women oh. are playing a lot because you have these parents tournaments you know and the women are i mean some of my wife's friends have come and told me ki can you coach me you know and i'm and they have coaches they have one on one coaches they have team coaches everything is sorted out that in one question for you is that what was it like representing india for the first time i mean wearing the india colors that must have been some moment almost like you know an olympic type uh, performance very, I mean, very emotional very emotional moment i remember uh, my first match was against kenya in gwalior uh, and uh, Uh, it was in may rajesh in gwalior so you can imagine how hot it was it was 48 degrees in the shade and 55 in the sun wow uh, and uh, i remember sachin asking me that uh, jatin how are you feeling uh, and i said uh, i'm i'm feeling like i'm walking on air uh, but i'm going to try uh, not to collapse on the ground because of this heat you know <laughs> uh, so so the so the feeling was amazing i i played only four times for india but i i uh, you know i couldn't wait to get out there uh, to bat i had no nerves whatsoever uh, for some strange reason the usual butterflies in my stomach uh, which used to happen at a training session or a game for bombay had completely disappeared uh, so i i i enjoyed every minute of uh, of what you call a blink and miss it kind of <laughs> <laughs> international career but but you know i can with pride i can wear that cap uh, which is which is which is more than anything else uh, you know to me i mean your your career was cut short by an ankle injury and that would have been very disappointing i mean you you grew yeah, up, was, grew up uh, the the previous night there were back to back games the previous night i had hit the winning runs against pakistan uh, in 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 what was a little bit of a tight game and everybody was really happy in the dressing room and and i was like you know okay this is international cricket you know and uh, the next morning first ball i just rolled my ankle over i could hear the ligaments tear they just snapped basically uh, and and we just didn't have the right support staff because that was the evolution curve at which cricket was uh, and if we had say uh, uh, nitin patel who we have today in the dressing room nitin would have got me back on the pitch in 3 or 4 months probably it took me a year to get back you know because because uh, the uh, the guy who was with the team uh, said beta combi clam le lo and i said no it's gone i could, i could i i heard it go and my leg had become like a watermelon literally you know so till i came back to india i, I had not got uh, 7 days it was not treated basically you know combi clam so, treatment yeah yeah so but but today you know you have great uh, physios and uh, so that's just the that's just the curve of evolution uh you know the which the game has uh, gone through but to answer your question rajesh absolutely wonderful feeling uh, you know and you realize it now more more and more as as your life uh, goes on uh, that hey you know uh, uh, it it's uh, it's it's it, it was a sweet sweet uh, uh, happening in your life yeah yeah and as fellow boscoites we cheered you on and we were so disappointed on that ankle injury i remember that one Just speaking yeah. about Pakistan, I cannot help but ask this question: These spectators go nuts when it's an India-Pakistan match, and the stress on us. I remember growing up was some crazy amount before a match, and we would be there, we would be talking about it. As a cricketer, these are high-stress moments, as we assume it is. What is it that really goes around behind the scenes in the dressing room in your mind when, let's say, there is a big match, and for all practical purposes, an India-Pakistan match? it is uh, it's very tense undoubtedly it's extremely tense you have to learn how to manage yourself uh, you know tension manifests itself in many ways uh, and and hence it's very important to know your mind know your game uh, and 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 stick to the process which has got you that far basically so because it can make you do silly things uh, you know tension but to answer your question uh, it's extremely tense uh, Uh, uh but once you're out on the ground i think uh, people settle down uh, you know your heart rate uh, comes back to normal uh, but in the in the dressing room it is it is quiet you know and when you have a quiet dressing room usually means it's a very very tense dressing room 
And Jatin, you were one person who then made the transition also to sort of the cricket administration. Uh, yeah. You've been a national selector, identifying new talent. Uh, so you are one of a handful of selectors in a country which has literally a billion selectors, you know, where every yeah. decision is <laughs> micro-analyzed. <laughs> Yeah. every match or even before every match yeah. yeah how was the process of sort of uh, a why did you get into cricket administration that's number one i i was uh, i uh, was thinking about uh, my next innings from mm -hmm. nike uh, you know because i'd spent a decade and you know i i, I wanted to come back to india uh, my, uh, i spent three years in amsterdam but i wanted to come back to india uh, because i knew that there is a huge opportunity to contribute to sport in India. You know, I wanted to use my experience. I'd learned from the best in the world. Uh, I wanted to use my experience for that. So I came back to India and then, then somebody from the BCCI approached me and said, you know, we are looking for younger selectors now because our team is getting younger. Uh, and Anurag Thakur, uh, sir, was uh, president. And then somebody from the BCCI said that, hey, you know, we'd like, we'd like for you to apply. We don't promise anything, but we'd like for guys like you to apply. Uh, so I said, you know, wow, uh, I love watching cricket, Rajesh. Uh, and and uh, that's the bedrock of a selector. You know, you need to enjoy watching cricket because you need to watch uh, every ball and you need to watch multiple things in every ball, you know. Uh, so, so that's how it happened. Uh, I was very, very surprised that I got the job, honestly, uh, because, uh, you know, there were far bigger names who had also applied. Uh, but but I did the job for four years. Uh, uh, for four years, uh, I would have watched uh, four or five days of cricket every week. Uh, you know, yeah, every week. So I was watching about 450 overs of cricket every week. Uh, and plus, I would come back in the evening and mornings and late evenings. I would be working on Kilomore. You know, we were. Uh, I was kind of juggling both the balls uh, there. Uh, but yeah, you, it, it was, it was, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. If such an opportunity comes up a few years down the road, I would, I would like to do it maybe at a junior selection level, you know, where you are really uh, going only on, 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 on your eye uh, more than performance. You know, the under 19 teams are picked more on potential than performance. Senior teams are picked more on performance because that potential is already there. Uh, so yeah, it, it, uh, it was great because you know when you're watching a game, uh, you're you're watching so many things in a game. You know when you're watching Rajesh uh, as as a future prospect for India, uh, you're watching him after Rajesh has scored a hundred. You're watching him after he has scored a first ball zero, uh, and his partner has scored a hundred. You're watching him minutely. Is he is he celebrating his partner's success or is he not? Uh, you know is is he still in the game or is he not? Does he care about the game or does he, doesn't he care about the game? I would walk around the boundary, you know, I walk five or six kilometers every day and I would finish that walk around the boundary line and I would talk to players. Uh, I would just ask, uh, I'll, I'll tell you an example about Shubman. You know, Shubman was at fine leg and I asked him, Shubman, what situation mein kya karega tu, if you were captain? So immediately he said, Jatin bhai, I this left arm spinner ko idhar se, because wo thoda ball grip ho hai. Uh, and I am still here because there is a little moisture in the wicket, there is a spin in my mind. And if it is a hard ball, it will also bounce. That showed me that Gil was in the game completely. You know? But you have other guys who, who are kind of woken up uh, because they didn't expect that question. And they were probably thinking about the IPL auction uh, later on. But this guy was clued in. So, so, so these, are the, uh, these are the small barometer uh, kind of uh, points which which I would, which I would focus on because there's a lot of context. There's a lot of culture, which is needed uh, when you're thinking of progressing talent into that, you know, your, your top team. So uh, I, I think as a national selector, as Rajesh said, it's extremely difficult and you have a billion selectors in this country. And I think uh, somewhere we also get a sense of there is a dual responsibility. One is to win the match today. Yeah. versus building for winning matches on a regular basis. And so you, that, that's that's one part of it. The other part of the slowly, I think we've been, as even as viewers, we've been able to see the culture of the team shift yeah. to a lot more aggression, etc. So, uh, what is the role that the selectors need to play for this long-term, short-term? And do they affect the culture that fundamentally comes across? It's yeah, great, great question. I think selectors need to be uh, bridges. 
between two or three uh, different elements. Uh, one is the Indian team, then you have the India A team, then you have the National Cricket Academy, then you have the under-19 team. Each under-19 team and A team and the academy have different set of personnel in charge of them. The Indian team has a team, uh, you know, a think tank. So we would organize these uh, these meetings, you know, we, we would have uh, a meeting every six weeks to, to understand, uh, you know, what, what the top team needs uh, and what we think they need, align that, uh, and and then go and watch players accordingly. Uh, but but the the vision pretty much comes from the head coach uh, and the captain as to hey this is what we want to do, uh, and it's done very nicely. You know, there's a zero to sixty day plan and there's a quarterly plan, and you know pretty much like how Rajesh uh, we have annual operating plans and quarterly operating plans. It's it's pretty much that way. I I, I try to introduce a little bit from my side. Uh, you know, uh, try to seem a little intelligent and, <laughs> and do stuff because they would turn to me and say, hey, you've got corporate experience, right? What do you think about this? And, and like Jamit, you said, you know, you rattle off four or five words and people think that you're a smart guy. Uh, but, but essentially, you know, the, the selectors have to play a integration kind of role uh, in, in, in a lot of this. Uh, and we have to be prepared... Uh, all the time for plan B's and plan C's because injuries can happen anytime. Uh, so then how's that, how's that India A team shaping up, uh, you know, uh, so that if something happens, how can we quickly fast track somebody uh, and, and that guy goes and plays for India. A, a big, a big unlock uh, was uh, the lack of budget constraints from the BCCI, you know. So you could have an India A team going on a shadow tour of Australia one, four weeks before the team goes there because the Indian team is going to start playing one day years first and then test matches. So you send your test specialist with the shadow tour. So Pujara, Vihari, Saha, Rane go with the A team and they get used to those wickets there much before uh, they need to play test cricket there. You know, this takes money. This takes crores and crores of rupees. Uh, but the BCC have always felt that the India A team is, so your Ranji Trophy is the funnel and then it kind of narrows down, it comes to the A team and then it goes to the main team. So, so we are like the caretakers of that funnel at the broader and the mid level and then the team management is, uh, completes the conversion of that funnel into, into success, essentially. So it's much more, much more than sitting around a table like we see in movies, drinking coffee and saying, Mere hisab se isko khelna chahiye. Absolutely, absolutely. And and when you're working with guys like Virat and Ravi, they are always on the ball. Virat is a highly data-driven kind of a guy. Uh, and But at the same time, you know, likes uh, likes players expressing themselves. Uh, uh, we, we, we focused on, I focused on, uh, on, on whether a guy has had two or three failures. But even after that, is he sticking to his normal game? Or has he gone into a plan B and said, you know, I'm a little... Uh, strike rate come karke mein runs banata hon, yeah? because I need to get to the team. Or does he try and go at his usual strike rate, which is 170, 180, knowing that you know things will come good uh, sooner rather than later. So looked at many, many of these pieces which provide context more than anything else. Another very interesting change, uh, Jatin, in which uh, in cricket which has happened and uh, sort of which you've obviously seen through, is that. Uh, the talent earlier used to be from the big cities. Yeah. Of course, you know, Mumbai, Delhi, uh, Bangalore, etc. And now there's a huge shift towards tier two, tier three towns. Yeah. I mean, there's raw talent, which is there yeah. everywhere, which needs to get nurtured. How's yeah. that been? Because that also changes the dynamics of a, the composition yeah. of the team. Also, the fact that, you know, it's a great leveler. Any person with natural ability today has a chance of making it to the top. Yeah. I would say that... Uh, uh, there's one reason for this, uh, you know, inflow of players from smaller cities. And that reason is Sachin Tendulkar. You know, he just grabbed uh, the attention and grabbed the imagination of so many parents and so many kids. And, and all that happened because the BCCI was, show, was telecasting all these games live. You know, nobody look, nobody thinks about the fact that all these games were live uh, and, and India were, was playing all the time. Uh, so I think uh, uh, nobody should undermine the marketing gravitas uh, of the BCCI uh, in this, you know. So they didn't wait for the best deals at that time. 
they just uh, focused on getting as many games live uh, as possible because they knew their 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 valuation would go up uh, you know for uh, once once more people start watching it uh, so i think uh, you know publishing games to a wider audience uh, and sachin tendulkar uh, i think are the two biggest kind of reasons for uh, you know this inflow of uh, the dhonis and the rainas and uh, you know the umesh yadav uh, was a tennis ball fast bowler you know from just outside nagpur they called him for a talent hunt and he said uh, uh, you know nahi main to idhar acha paisa kama leta hu tennis ball cricket mein you know <laughs> he was a professional tennis ball player they would he would go and play three four matches in a day you know so so the guy said nahi you come listen to me you come for this trial and then he said ha theek hai aata hu but main chappal mein dalunga you know so 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 these guys uh, and his favorite is sachin tendulkar you know he said he asked somebody sachin sir sachin sir se autograph mil sakta hai kya agar main aaun idhar so you know so it's it's uh, it's all of this which which is happening there's a huge there's a huge subculture of cricket rajesh in india you know tennis ball cricket is a parallel universe of its own uh, you know and now amateur cricket is becoming that so so we are truly sowing the seeds or the seeds have been sown for a long term security of this game in india i just yeah. hope it happens in other sport uh, you know uh, something needs to be done for the other sports uh, but i i think uh, indians winning more medals at the next olympics will be a big unlock uh, there uh, i think uh, you will see more gymnasts and boxers and you know swimmers and uh, uh, you know uh, martial arts uh, exponents you know coming through Uh, I'm, I'm already seeing our business is already seeing more girls participation. Uh, you know, in football, for example, in cricket. Uh, I mean, women's cricket has gone through the roof, absolutely gone through the roof, uh, quality and quantity wise. Uh, so, so yes, lots of good things happening in sport. Uh, and uh, you know, our, our, you know, these these wins in Australia and and you know th- these kind of uh, accelerate accelerate that passion. Uh, more so i think uh, what you're saying is also interesting so it it takes 28 years before two world cups and then the culture to change so uh, after 83 i think we all of us were fired up in our imagination and it took us 28 years for all that generation to come in and of course the greatest yeah. ever <laughs> the uh, uh, who fires a, i think everybody at that point of time wanted to be a batsman took a um heavier bat and had a short bat lift <laughs> and a straight punch uh, trying to say bhai hum bhi tendulkar ke held, held the bat right at the bottom like <laughs> at the bottom so just coming through it before we just move into your uh, supply and demand which i think is very interesting about kelo more i just wanted to touch up on an interesting point that you're saying while you're talking about um uh, a lot of this com- coming in you also spoke a lot about the marketing pro- progress of bcci and their foresight to try and integrate a lot of it you've been on the other side and very interestingly like the t-shirt behind you is signed by roger federer this is this is part of your uh, stint abroad and in india as a marketing professional yeah. what were you doing and what did you see and what are the interesting tidbits that we can talk about or listen from there so so uh, uh, i remember reading in the times of india on the front page uh, nike signs deal with bcci and i thought wow this is like so cool you know the biggest brand in the world wants the indian team so this is boss this is it you know we have come of age now uh, and lo and behold i get a call in the next few days uh, you know uh, uh, saying that hey i'm calling from nike and uh, we'd like to meet you and i thought it was one of my friends you know so i said you know I, because this was a foreign voice and i i thought it's one of my friends from england who keeps calling and you know pulling my leg so i said nay you know uh, he said no no i really am calling from nike you know <laughs> so we are in bombay and we'd like to meet you and and i had met with a serious road accident you know so uh, i was i got run over by a car and that broke my broken my leg and uh, my business uh, really tanked because of that i had to shut uh, my business you know uh, uh, rajesh that business which i had come to you for i had to shut everything down because i was in bed for about 6 months basically Uh, so i was just out with my wife she had, you know she was supporting the family uh, through her job uh, and uh, things were not good at all uh, and uh, 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 she uh, took me out for a brunch on sunday i was still on crutches actually 
and uh, she said come we'll go out for a brunch you'll feel better uh, so we and this call, this call came as we were going back home you know uh, so they met me the next day and they uh, they made me an offer uh, pretty much immediately uh, and uh, said hey we'd like you to run our sports marketing uh, uh, team and nike have a very simple equation of doing business it's uh, product plus athlete plus marketing is equal to sales you know so you'll get a mercurial superfly great football boot put it on cristiano ronaldo tell some great marketing stories and that's your sales so sports marketing is the team which signs players uh, uh, for nike uh, so they i came in managing the bcci relationship but also uh, with the mandate that build a pool of uh, nike athletes in india so my first signing was actually virat kohli at the age of 16 uh you know before he had played for india under 19 also uh seriously that, yeah, you just picked up virat kohli yeah that was my virat two was minutes my... on that how did you figure bhai ye virat bhai hai <laughs> uh he he looked an okay player he look, looked an okay player but i uh, i saw his eyes and i uh, thought hey this guy uh, this guy backs himself you know this guy thinks that he is good and uh, let's take a punt Uh, and and he was with nike for 7 years uh, after that if you remember he used to play with the nike bat uh, that was one of the projects i was involved in uh, nike didn't have uh, any teams in the ipl so we thought hey you know what better billboard to get than a bat so we started making cricket bats and sign players left right and center and uh, ambush the hell out of all the other brands uh, basically <laughs> so so i i used to run the sports marketing team uh, which is basically so sports marketing is a very intersectional function in nike because you're working with the product teams you're working with the marketing teams you're working with the finance teams you're working with the sales teams you're working with all the teams you are the guy uh, to make stuff happen uh, essentially uh, and and that's pretty much what i did for nike in uh, in europe in football uh, so on one side all the biggest uh, teams and nike had lot of teams at that time more than they have right now uh, so you arsenal was nike united was nike juventus was nike uh, and uh, so across northern central uh, across northern eastern and western europe uh, you know uh, looking after all the tier one assets in terms of clubs tier one assets in terms of players making sure that the right product is delivered to them at the right time working with our uh, uh top 5 sales accounts making sure that the right uh commercial and fan wear reaches the stores on time uh you know uh, what's the plan what's the retail marketing plan there what's the athlete leverage plan there working on strat plans from a financial perspective you know when is uh, rajesh's contract getting over do we sign him again or no uh, how, how much would we save if we don't so my last my one of my last kind of financial exercises was evaluating the united deal Uh, because we got like what we thought was a crazy crazy offer from united and we felt that hey they they just don't want us so they are giving us a crazy offer uh, but we had to build an entire case around it and we 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 told uh, i mean i was just a small cog doing some of the work there uh, but essentially telling them that you know telling uh, the internal senior most stakeholders that it's just not about signing united uh, the other deals are going to cost us more because we've signed united Uh, so there's going to be a very big ripple effect, uh, and we don't think United is going to go to the Champions League final for the next two or three years. You know, so <laughs> the United fans didn't like it, but we we were we were proved right. So so also all of this. I mean, I had bosses like Ricardo Colombini, John Banks. John Banks runs North America sports marketing for Nike right now. Ricardo Colombini is global football uh, vice president for Nike. Just amazing guys. You just had to turn up. and keep your uh, ears open and your mouth shut uh, and and, uh, and 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 do what they told you to do essentially so jadan this was fascinating i mean you were taking a lot of learnings from cricket in india to europe and then also the learnings that you had in europe uh, through football and uh, just watching at a different scale uh, that also then uh, uh, sets the ground for you to then come back to india as an entrepreneur Yes, absolutely. I, it gave me a lot of confidence uh, to start to start up on my own because I I felt I saw a lot of the uh, Indian consumer and the European consumer, and I could see that arc uh, of 
evolution which existed between them and a new ki indian consumer will also reach and behave like a like a new european consumer you know they will consume merchandise they will consume sport they will consume venues they will consume coaching and it gave me a lot of confidence uh, uh, coming into coming into this venture uh, that hey let's set it up now we could be few years ahead of our time which it's t- turned out that way uh, but uh, if we if we keep the ball rolling we will definitely definitely see traction so i was very clear that i wanted something tech led uh, you know completely digital first app first tech led um uh, and uh, gave me that so i thought if there's this this kind of a tech led effort with the consumer already kind of showing us uh, you know that they want more uh, uh, that was that was the seed and and you know uh, i look at some of our earlier uh, decks and i i there's a quiet uh, laughter or a smile on my face that it was so naive uh, you know so so you keep learning uh, and and uh, like you said i just wanted to use the organization of the business uh, uh processes functions vision uh, to in, into my new venture so what does uh, khelo more uh, do i understand it's an aggregator it's a two sided marketplace in sense of trying to get a lot of sporting facilities coaches etc and yeah. uh, getting the players in so uh, how does this work so so essentially the problem case is very simple it's that there is always a mismatch between occupancy and capacity be it a coach an academy or a sports venue so so have a great app bring the consumers to your app because they want to play tell them that hey you can play here you can play there there stuff around you so it's a discovery platform which helps venues monetize themselves a little bit better uh and we take a commission on every transaction which flows through the platform it's still a free platform for supply we don't charge listing fees on it but at some stage we will start monetizing their presence on our platform uh, as well so it's a very simple just connecting matching demand to supply and increasing that supply and then deepening our work with that supply and deepening our work with the consumer so so you so jemet goes to a football turf but he wants to buy a sandwich or a protein shake or a, a protein bar there uh, so there's a small kelomor food counter there which you can book in advance because okay, on 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 the app you can also you know buy stuff uh, or you want a football and you don't have the time to go to a store there we have a inventory light way where we have a few items there at the venue itself and you say yaar uh, i've got all of this done through my booking process and so you spent 200 rupees with khelo more your team has spent 2000 rupees but 200 is your share and you also spent 100 rupees on uh, vast with us uh, so so we we deepened uh, your share of wallet with us essentially we are now starting a leader board so the more you book through khelo more the more you win you can get ipl tickets ipl merchandise you can go and meet a player you can participate in a ipl training session you could win a mobile phone uh you know uh, you could win free slots for your next game uh, all of that so we want to kind of uh, throw our arms around all the sports participants and sports suppliers uh, in india so that's the business uh, in its uh, in its simple kind of form them two sided platforms are very difficult to build because you need to get both before you get the critical mass so yeah. for you which one has been the harder side the supply uh, or the demand <clears throat> the hardest side uh, rajesh has been the product actually you know uh, building building a good building a good platform uh, to uh, to en- enable idiosyncrasies in an unorganized market to still allow supply to come in has been one of the tougher ones uh, uh, and then uh, the supply has been uh, one of the tougher ones because very unorganized uh these are basically uh you know businessmen who made some money somebody said yaar uh, nakhi de uh, uh, 3 3 pe 30 lakh rupya nakhi de at turf ma you know uh, 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 break even thase uh, you know in a year and they break even in 18 19 months so they are like okay we are happy yaar hello more thanks for coming to us but we are happy with the business we have but i'm and then we say that yeah but you know you have 60% of your inventory still unsold uh, and we'll we'll sell that for you and uh, the smart ones get it and 
uh, the guys who don't get it see that the others are getting more business through us uh, and and that's the flywheel which kind of starts turning not everybody is working with us some guys uh, are pretty adamant but i think it's a question of staying at the wicket uh, and and delivering delivering good results for the guys who are on your platform uh, and they say are you know uh, uh, khelo more se business mil raha we also have another line of business called khelo more at home Uh, which is uh, like how swiggy riders go to deliver food we have 50 coaches whom we are piloting in bombay uh, who go to gated communities and coach in the building itself basically you know so there's a small slot selection tool and that business is on fire right now so uh, so so these are the two pillars of business uh, which we are uh, going after uh, basically so that's an interesting one so i think this seems to be a pandemic pivot for you Yes, uh, the pandemic pivot actually was lockdown me kilo more because. Ah, that's what I'm seeing online. Lockdown me yeah. kilo more kya hai? Yeah. So on March 22nd, everything shut. All the academies shut. Academies still have not fully reopened. Turfs have reopened, and we said, boss, how do we do? What do I do? You know, I was sitting in my terrace, like wondering what the hell am I going to do now? You know. Uh, so then we said, hey, let's start some online coaching because I was seeing with my children, it was a challenge. keeping them occupied you know during the day so i said i'm sure we'll you know we we'll try stuff so we went after a smaller age group 6 to 10 you really don't need to be on a field to learn some basics of the game so badminton cricket uh, squash table tennis tennis we were teaching them online uh, we gave free trials you know uh, and and then parents liked it then we included chess and chess just went through the roof because chess is made for online you know uh then we said hey let's do ballet because i was sitting on a sunday afternoon at home and saying yaar uh, kuch aur karna chahiye you know there's there's more there's more that we can do we started ballet we started contemporary dance we got like tons of mothers uh from smaller towns wanting their daughters to learn ballet you know so so i'm sure there's a huge business to be built here as well so so one thing which the pandemic taught us was that uh you know we have to pivot and pivot quickly uh Uh, and the second is it's taught coaches uh, and it's taught venues that technology is an integral part of this game now you know you cannot you cannot not have technology uh, so we have a small uh, i like to call it a cove uh, you know where coaches log in uh, there's a zoom uh, thingy happening their students log in they have some tools to use there you know so so that becomes a part of uh, our offering to the coaches as well so lockdown me khelo more was online coaching uh and and that opens up the funnel we got thousands and thousands of uh, of bookings through lockdown me khelo mode which for a sports business is unheard of you know the number we did is unheard of and that that uh, that becomes our consumer funnel for post pandemic you know because they tasted khelo mode and the conversion is lesser our cac really goes down for those consumers as well which impacts our overall cac so it it all worked out well we also used it to completely rewrite our code a uh, completely rebuild our platform because that's the way i thought i could keep the tech team motivated give them lots of work so the first two hours of for the first two hours of every day was stand up meetings on the consumer side stand up meetings on the vendor panel uh, and uh, i was just doing project management because i didn't know anything i still don't know anything about technology uh, my cto laughs at me he was like you know stop talking about tech i said yeah okay cool uh, so uh, so so that's how we kind of you know went through it and then Uh, in the middle of the pandemic our due diligence was happening thankfully dream eleven invested in the company uh, so so we could we could uh, we could yeah we could uh, live to fight another day basically i think what's fascinating uh, listening to you jatin is how i mean even in the early days going back 20 years you had that entrepreneur in you and uh, i mean if you think back to your career you know from cricket Uh, uh, you had an unfortunate ankle injury. You never let that sort of hold you back. Uh, uh, then to Nike, and not just in India, and then making the move to Europe, and then coming back to yeah. India, uh, uh, and uh, of course the the national selector, and now Kelo Moore. I mean, this is an amazing journey uh, that you've had. And what are the sort of, if I were to ask you, a couple of two or three key lessons from your life as an entrepreneur? Yeah. Uh, I mean, just listening to you talk about CAC and all is just fascinating. <laughs> and stand-up meetings and all. <laughs> I would have never assumed that Rajesh at the start that I will get the marketing at the end of it. <laughs> Absolutely. 
so i think uh, i was very fortunate to uh, uh, on on a few counts growing up I, i have two elder sisters they are both doctors uh, you know so that i've seen i've seen resilience there uh, you know my mother is an educator uh, my father is a coach uh, but uh, i played for bombay and uh, bombay is a team that never gives up uh, you know we we keep fighting uh so that that was ingrained in me that i'll i'll uh, something mai karunga iska kuch to hoga you know uh, and i've always felt every day is a new day uh, so I've, i think uh, i think that's why people invested in kelo mode they, they saw that you know here's a guy who has some ten, who's tenacious you know he's batted number 3 for bombay for 10 years so we can we can trust his tenacity if nothing else and uh, I, I think people also feel that sports is a sunrise sector, uh, and and if we can uh, organize this uh, through tech, uh, then uh, then it would be great. But I I just feel that it's it's uh, patience. A lot of patience is needed. Uh, I'm I I hope I'm becoming a better leader every day because I'm thinking about my team a lot. You know I uh, and 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 their paths uh, for the next few years. Uh, so i think that's that's really important but uh, one thing which uh, somebody said about our team was and, and this was a competitor who said it uh, and he told uh, somebody that hey you know these guys are uh, they're a resilient bunch you know they they keep coming back uh, even if the guy says no uh, the kelo mor guy will be back trying to convince the menu manager the next day ki yaar thoda to list karke dekho you know give us a chance uh, so i think my team i'm really fortunate they're super hard workers like mad even today they are in the office and you know we are working away uh, so i think tenacity patience and one i i had the confidence like i said earlier that consumer is there he's ready we just need to dig it up a little bit for them and show ki ye hai you know uh, so so yeah so i think playing in a team playing in a strong team you know working with the tendulkars and the ravi shastris of this world he used to say ki in in bombay games also ki you know let's just let's just hang hang in hang in uh, in this game let's just hang in let's just play tight for the next half an hour and see what happens you know we were playing a ranji trophy final once bombay delhi uh, and this was the only ranji trophy final which was played under the lights and this game was also in gwalior uh, and uh, we entered the fifth day with delhi and they have a big batting lineup raman lamba ajay sharma all the big elephants of domestic cricket you know uh, and we had a young team sanjay was the captain we didn't have sachin we didn't have vinod we didn't have ravi shastri we didn't have salil ankola uh, but uh, we scored some 500 or something you know we we put up a bloody big total 570 or something like that uh, which incidentally is what's happening in the test match right now uh, uh, and uh, we entered the last day with uh, delhi needing 270 on the last day with eight wickets in hand and remember sanjay mansrekar uh, uh, in the uh, on the fourth evening at dinner he said yaar we'll have to do something out of the ordinary to win this game uh, and nilesh kulkarni was our left arm spinner and he said i will bowl uh, from one end uh, i'll bowl uh, 45 overs from one end because we had to bowl 90 overs He said, "I'll bowl 45 overs from one end, uh, and I'll bowl over the wicket, and I'll bowl a negative line, you know. Uh, and he and uh, we had to be careful because otherwise you get wided very quickly. So he said, 'Don't worry about that. You guys worry about the other end, you know.' Uh, he bowled 42 overs for 61 runs, uh, and uh, it started off with Delhi saying, 'Yar, ye kitna time karenge ye?' And then we till lunch we did that only." you know after lunch for one hour we did that only suddenly delhi needed 170 in at 5 and a half 6 and over and they panicked and we got a brilliant run out then we got one more then we got one more and we won the game from there you know so yeah so that's always like a big lesson for me that hang in there you know uh, and one thing which sport teaches you is that you always get what you deserve so if you if you put in the right effort you somewhere it will come come good somewhere it will come good so i think it's <laughs> get what you deserve i think we've come to a end rajesh right towards the end and i think right that's all the time we have for 
Rajesh, any last beautiful summary words from you before I take close it? I think it's it's just remarkable. I mean, uh, connecting, of course, again with uh, Jatin, but also I think this is his career arc. Um, I think he's he he is he's exactly what he said. He's hanging in there, not given up despite some of the adversities that have been there, and cutting new ground. I mean. the nike example the uh, nike story that he talked about you know bringing in the new ideas into cricket uh, and other sports with khelo more of course he's ahead of his time but that's what entrepreneurs are it takes in india today i think 7 to 10 years uh, to to build a business i think the 2020s are the year of sport uh, young mothers and parents really you know want that extra dimension and uh, i think jatin's khelo more is is right there ahead of the curve as he has always been through his life uh, great to see jatin's story i would i would love it if you download the app rajesh and have a look at it i would really love it, it absolutely it would, a, it would be a matter of pride for me if you have that app on your phone <laughs> no, absolutely i will do that jatin yeah. yes and not not just rajesh all of us will will, will look to download it and jatin it's quite interesting i think uh, one of the words that's often used with bombay cricketers is that khadus attitude the ability to just be there no matter what gets yeah. thrown at you yeah. and uh, today when i look back and it's 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 very funny i played very 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 low level cricket means basically corporate level cricket yeah. so that is that is no that is no level of cricket but it's still awesome fun it used to be as competitive and i remember this khadus attitude was ingrained into us at corporate level also <laughs> ki bombay cricket hai yani ki koi sala last tak chhodega nahi aur You may be losing, but सामने को तो fielding कराएगा ही कराएगा full forty five overs या कुछ भी हो. So I'll give you this one amazing story, which I must have scored some runs in my life and some bat- batted to some level, bowled to some level. But the match I remember the most, I was I think probably thirty four, thirty five towards the end of my cricketing life in that sense. And we had an RBI forty five over match, bank bank shield, and I was taken in because I could stay on the field for long. I could run and do fielding. So basically, I was number ten. Right, batting lineup man, and top guys in a forty-five over match could twenty overs. Me, what took the other? What, what, what runs made there? And I didn't need to do anything. I came into bat, eight wickets, nine wickets down, and my job was to bat the twenty-five overs. That's right. it. Right. So twentieth over, I think I walked in. I kept them on the field for twenty-five overs. I must have scored not more than twenty runs. Right. But उसको Field pe rakha and that that ability to just hang in there yeah. and I think they were extremely frustrated that at number ten number eleven is coming and irritating them and yeah. when they came back they were so drained they were so yeah. drained and we won that match yeah. and yeah. I I didn't realize that my team may there was a centurion in twenty overs and they were hoisting me कि यार तूने क्या किया so that is the cricket uh, khadusness I think that comes into the entrepreneurship that you are talking it's coming into the attitude that you are talking it comes into that thing saying that will hang in there there is no such thing such as loss there is no thing such as the game is over you keep yeah. playing you keep playing keep playing till the bloody end and that's yeah. where it comes through and i think what beautiful what you said product plus athlete plus marketing today yeah. speaking with you we got yeah. some amount of product we got got some amount of athlete and we got some amount of marketing in well, one said. hour them well said <laughs> आज सब कुछ मिल गया बिल्कुल बिल्कुल जस्ट बाय